Let's get right into the conversation and talk about the state of the economy and the state that Nigerians have found themselves in. Uh, according to various reports, things are not looking good. Uh, the indicators are also uh, showing a sign that the economy is continuing to contract and Nigerians are paying all the prices uh, for that. Uh, food inflation is at an all-time high, plus uh, the projections uh, by the United Nations Food Organization is also uh, looking like a grim reality right now, with projections showing that some 26.5 billion Nigerians are likely going to face hunger uh, this year due to food shortages. And of course, uh, the economic indices around uh, the narrow depreciation is also not looking good. So let's speak to an economist who will give us insights and analysis on how best to understand the situation uh, vis-a-vis what the government is doing and plans to do to mitigate uh, the situation. Join us on the program is Dr. Steve Mwachiku. Dr. Steve is an economist, financial analyst, and lead researcher at Stewart Asset Management Limited. He's joining us virtually uh, on the program this morning. Dr. Steve, good morning. It's good to see you this morning. Uh, I believe congratulations are in order in case you watched the game uh, yesterday, but I'll be surprised if you didn't. Um, Nigerians finally hear the sigh of relief yesterday, uh, last night, but it's not going to last long because reality is going to dawn this morning and then we're back to the usual rat race of trying to put food on the table, food that is not necessarily easily accessible, that is also not affordable. Your two cents on how bad the situation is right now and the return of the president and what apparently the federal government is trying to do to address the situation. Uh, yes, thank you and good morning, Nigerians. Uh, first and foremost, uh, let me congratulate Nigerians and you, my dear, uh, for the victory yesterday. Uh, at least uh, history has repeated itself once again. Uh, I know, yes, last night we were quite happy. You know, even when you don't have food in your stomach, when you don't have the meal for the night, we are jubilating. Nigerians, we are happy across the north, south, and east. Uh, you wake up this morning, it's the reality of the economic meltdown, the economic situation, and what you have to pass through to find either a 001 meal for the day, or 010 meal, or 0100 meal, as the case may be. That's what the situations Nigerians have found themselves as we speak. Yes. Uh, the recent developments and what have you in the economy is not really uh, telling well. Uh, it still goes back to what we have, particularly I fat, I'm feeling fatigued uh, to speak on most of these issues again, because I have a number of occasions repeatedly, uh, you know, emphasize on these very key things and Perhaps some may come if those within the corridors of power will say you are a prophet of do, you don't see anything good, you always look at things from this perspective that things are getting worse. But I was laying the facts around, I was laying the statistics, I was laying the figures, the data are suggesting what the current situations that we are now. Yes, of course. Uh, it may also look like see, that things will get worse if drastic things are not done, uh, perhaps to arrest most of these very uh, uh, propellers of the rising of uh, the trajectory the inflations are going and price of goods and services, which uh, boils down to the living conditions of Nigerians. Uh, I do say sometimes uh, that if you don't tackle them, it will get to a point where Nigerians will be faced with the consequences of uh, uh, not eating, malnutrition, and the rest of them will lead to hospitalization. I pray that it doesn't get to that point. So uh, the economic situations and indices around them is not suggesting that we are going to have a brighter or a better day or a better week or months to come. But if only uh, those saddled with the authorities from the physical and monetary sides uh, do the right things and see how they can tackle it and reduce or caution uh, the, uh, the sufferings. You will recall that at the inception of this very present administration, 
President Bola Ahmed Tinubu took very unpopular and very risky decision that will leave and at leave his administration, which is the twin policies of the government on fuel subsidy removal and the flotation of what you may call harmonization, unification, or devaluation of the Naira. These are the two major uh, economic policy of the federal government have, have resulted to this very ripple effect we are facing now in the economy. Yes, of course. Uh, what is expected of government? Are they expected? Some of uh, some of the scholars are thinking should they, well, you know, align to most of our thought, reverse most of these decisions so that we can get to real relief. We reverse I'll actually give the relief. Uh, I will say to an extent, earlier enough, the first week of this very policy, I did say, Mr. President, you have to reverse it and implement at least the fuel subsidy in a phaser manner. 20% remover, 40%, 30% till a point there is no subsidy anymore. But the consequences that we already, the damage already done to the economy in the form of rise in cost of price and goods and services, uh, we may, even if it reverses back to like 194, I think that was the price when he first changed it. If it reverses back to such price, we will not get the back of price back to somewhere around 35,000 or 40,000. It will be very, very difficult. So that's why I say the damage it has caused to the economy already we may not get an absolute or a equivalent of such reversal but uh, we believe that if things are done well uh, we may get some relief yes we may not have a total reversal of such prices to where they were before such announcements we expect good economic policy decisions that will tackle the supply and the demand push Two of them must work concurrently, simultaneously. You cannot push the supply of dollar to the system, whether you borrowed it or whether you source it from IMF or World Bank, leaving the demand aspects. The demand aspect is to make sure that we consume made in Nigerian product. If you still get a $50 billion to the system, to the economy, through supplies from World Bank or any other sources, in the next six, seven months or one year, the market will still absorb it. You have to address these two issues concurrently. Right. Make sure that we'll up up production of locally made products. Thank you. Right. Uh, I mean, you did talk about uh, prayer, and Nigerians are quite uh, steadfast uh, praying people. But we all know that while prayer is effective um, for our spiritual purposes, uh, it is not an economic policy uh, that one can, you know, uh, implement, so to say. So, in talking about implementation, what is your reading of the scale of the problem? You just pointed out that, listen, they can source all the dollars in the world, pump it into the economy. It's only a matter of time before we find ourselves in this hole again because we have not addressed uh, the demand side. So, looking at the economic reforms that the Tinubu administration likes to champion itself as um, as implementers or as advocate uh, for this radical economic change. Give me a sense of what you make of the scale of the problem and the scale of the solution, how, Nigerians, how soon Nigerians can begin to rip the benefits, as the presidency would like to say, of these reforms. Is it only a matter of time? <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I cannot say, I cannot pinpoint any of the economic policy decisions of the federal government led by President Bola Tunubu and his team. Currently, currently, that seems to suggest that uh, they are trying to tackle the issues. I have not seen any. We talked about palliative, that we should go for input palliative. They abandoned it. They went giving out money to state governors. We talked about making sure that you give a marching order to NMPC to make sure that they ramp up production to somewhere around 2 million barrels to 2.2 or even 2.5 million barrels per day. We have not seen any drastic improvement in the production of crude oil. We are still way below 1.3 or 1.4 million barrels per day. I have not seen, like I said, 
We talked about the issues around FDIs, inflows to the economy. Rather, we are seeing the opposite, exits of multinational companies that also have brought this very money into the shores of Nigeria through expansions of their business lines. So I have not actually, I cannot pinpoint in particular the decision of the federal government or the, or the subnational government that suggests that we are going to be out of the woods in the nearest future. So we need to see such positions or such decisions of government that is directly targeted at addressing these issues. What can you do about mechanized farming? A time like this calls for a serious actions. We are in shortage of greens. If you cannot secure the farmlands of uh, artisanal farmers, you can also go into mechanized farming. Federal government, these billions of interventions, can't you open, take up hectares of land, cultivate these grains and push it to the economy? Not well, most often I learned, I had the the presidency is saying that they are releasing some grains from our reserves. Where are those reserves? Go to those silos. You can't find grains. The prices of this item is not just rising because we have scarcity. It's also rising because there are all the macroeconomic indices of factors. If you supply grains, without making sure that some level of stability in other items. The man who buy, I listen to your report, the man who sells corn will definitely go to the market to buy oil. The man who sells oil will definitely will perhaps buy other items that require forest. So it has to be a joint and a coordinated approach. Like I said, nothing stops federal government as we speak. This is a farming season coming up to go into cultivation and production of this item. Remember that the essence of government and governance is for the protection and the welfare of the people. The welfare of the Nigerians is in concern now. We are seeing protests, riots springing up from all corners of the nation. So government needs to be very careful because before this resort into something they cannot be able to handle. I said again, these are the drastic measures. What is Minister of Agriculture doing? What is Bank of Agriculture doing? What is all these interventionist agencies like Bank of Agriculture, uh, Bank of Industry, name it. What are they doing to support farmers? If not the artisanal farmers, industrial farmers, we have companies like Ulams here. What are they doing in partnership with such individuals or with such corporate organizations to make sure that they move into mass production of these grains? This is the only way you can bring down the price of a crate of egg. It's selling above 3,000, 3,005, depending your location. A loaf of bread is eating 2,000. These are the byproducts of these very grains we are talking about. So government has to be decisive. Government has to be calculative and face these very issues headlong. Not what I had yesterday, the issues around uh, declaration of a court directing federal government to fix prices. As fantastic, as, as uh, unpopular it may sound, it's not, it's not going to address any issue. What I think that judgment is actually targeted at giving government the leverage to fix the price of petroleum product, in particular the fuel, because based on the current realities, the selling price of petroleum product cannot be obtainable, cannot be, an NPC cannot sell at this very current price. I think that's why government has to quickly get that kangaroo judgment to perhaps give them leverage to say, okay, we have the direction of the court to fix price on this very petroleum product, in particular the fuel or the PMS. So I, I think government is going the wrong way. Right. If you cannot address these issues as relates to demand, and supply curve concurrently, then this very cosmetics window dressing approaches, we cannot get out of the woods in the nearest future. Uh, looking at uh, the, the, the situation you just raised, because I was actually going to ask you that uh, same question around price control mechanisms as a stopgap approach, right? Uh, so that the government can at least 
uh, allow the people to experience a little bit of a, uh, a circa, right, um, to breathe so that they can at least afford uh, to put food on the table. What is the standard international best practice here? And are there any parallels you can draw from other countries when they are trying to uh, control the situation? Because as we do know, there are many other countries right now who are dealing with more than 100% uh, inflation rate. Argentina just recently, well over 200. You have the likes of Venezuela who have been uh, under this austerity measure for close to two to three years now. Uh, so many other countries. We understand that there is a global dimension to it. So not all of the variables are within the controls of the Nigerian government. But give me a sense of if at all there is a price control mechanism that can be deployed. What would it look like? And how should the federal government deploy it, especially as Nigerians uh, continue to ask for an intervention that would immediately at least bring down uh, significantly the price of food commodities? Yeah, yes, of course. And um, if you may recall, Lok, so I have written a couple of articles uh, which I have published too in regards to the need for a price control mechanism or a price uh, control board. Uh, which I also call it can also wear the tag of uh, presidential tax force on control of prices of essential prices. So it's quite important. It should be part of the measures to see some level of sanity uh, because uh, beyond the dimensions of the inflations that Nigerians are facing, Nigerians are passing through uh, strength flexion. Nigerians are also passing through skin flexions. Nigerians are also passing through sellers' inflation. So these are all result of the wholesalers, the distributors, the manufacturers are actually exploiting Nigerians with a, an instruction or a team from the federal government in form of price control will be able to help you know control most of these rising prices they their work is to dialogue with captains of industries and have them regulate most of the rate at which their prices are going up yes the middleman is taking advantage of nigerians they are exploiting nigeria if dollar rises or naira falls by 10 percent their prices of goods will go up by 50 percent or 60 percent some even though will put it to 100 percent a 10 percent 20 percent rise or fall in naira will nigerians will suffer 50 70 percent in the byproducts or selling prices of their items in the streets so government needs to be in the business of doing business now time have gone this is not the time to say government has no business in business like i said earlier the essence of government the essence of governance is for the welfare and prosperity of the people and this is has this this is why government has to intervene intervention will not only be by giving stipends or paying palliative or all that it can also come from this form of policy interventions meet with these captains of industry dialogue with them and find out why their prices are jumping their prices are going by 100 percent find some impunitive measures that can correct most of these excesses of the captains of industry i cited an Uh, it looks like we're having a bit of a challenge uh, with the connectivity to Dr. Steve. We're going to work on that uh, and uh, get him to uh, continue the analysis on the state of the Nigerian economy. Something that needs no introduction. I can hear you if you can hear me. Nigerian. Dr. Steve, uh, it appears that we have the connection back now. So please uh, go ahead. Yes, like I was saying, there is need for such an institution or for such an intervention uh, uh, committee of the federal government in form of price control. Not actually they are coming to regulate the price, but have some kind of dialogue to bring some level of sanity in the pricing system. Like the federal government is making sure that, yes, the price of petroleum doesn't go more up high. Also make sure that some certain critical national 
commodities or essential commodities are also tackled and make sure that the prices doesn't go up. It can come from dialogue. It can also come from government involvement in production of such line items. Like I talked about the grains. At least the government can do that. Government can move in and secure some hectares of lands and make sure that in the next six, seven, eight months, these grains will be available in the next harvesting season. So it is a practical ways of solving these very issues. I talked about the issue of the demand curve and the supply curve. You have to follow them concurrently. So if you are looking at controlling the price, by just sitting there at the villa or as a minister in your office and these are policies or these are uh, uh, directives, it will not work. It, you have to be involved. You have to look at the books of these very individuals. Where you need to supply electricity to them, make available electricity to these captains of industries. Where you need to supply forests to them. These are the things they will be raising that why my prices are going up is because I don't have some. You, make, you have a targeted policy, targeted approach to most of these very issues so that you can have some, Nigerians can have some relief. You cannot continue to sit there in the villa or sit there as a minister in your office. Why not go out and reach out to these individuals who are the key players in the industry? Uh, Dr. Steve, is it your submission that the government for quite some time now um, has abdicated its responsibility in having a meaningful engagement or relationship with the business community, so much so that the business community feels the need to look after its own interests without necessarily feeling the need to uh, complement what the government is doing? Or are they working at cross purposes, uh, do you feel? While the, the business is looking for profit, government is struggling to try to appease the people by pacifying them using some of these economic reforms that do not align with what is best or what is good for both the business and for co for the country? Uh, uh, it, that's what it seems like. It seems like um, it's a business for the uh, uh, the the uh, the capitalists and also some sort of uh, gains for the government because it, it, the government posture have always looked this very posture of a transactional leadership style where these captains of industry will have some pot for them. We have listened in the years ago how there are some, you know, some some addings for some of these government officials in most of, of these very corporate organizations or industries that produce most of these goods and services that we Nigerians consume on daily basis. Uh, and government is only concerned about its own revenue. Government is not concerned about the pricing of these very items how Nigerians are faring about it. So government has to be involved by being empathetic and sympathetic to the sufferings and living conditions of Nigerians. That is the only way you can be committed to it. Take away this posture of transactional leadership. We are only what comes to you is what you are concerned about. Government is only concerned about the revenue, the, the returns, in form of uh, uh, income tax or reforms as uh, company income tax or individual income tax. This is only what government is concerned. In fact, recently, a company accused, one of the telecom company accused the federal government of forcing or coercing them to pay taxes in advance. It happened. I think it's still happening. They have not come to deny that they are not still continuing because the last administration of President Bola Ahmed Tunubu was actually receiving tax payments from a telecommunication company, MTN in particular. They came out and said, we paid our taxes in advance. So, meaning government is only concerned about their own taxes, the revenues that comes to government, but the welfare of the citizen, it doesn't concern the government. So there should be that enforcement, sympathy for the people so that Nigerians will not be overcharged, overbuilt, or underserved. Remember I said earlier that what Nigerians are, in fact, the dimension of the inflation Nigerians are passing through now is beyond the inflation. Is now we are facing in the strengthflation Strengthflation, we are also facing the uh, skimflation. 
shrinkflation is a situation where product of these very uh, manufacturers they reduces the quantity of it you find out that you ought to buy a 50 kg and it's not 45 kg it's 40 kg they are still cheating nigeria while the quality also on the inflation aspect of it the quality of these products are going down so it is the responsibility of government through its statutory federal agencies to arrest to tackle and to fight for the consumers which is the nigerians that's why we have institutions like the navdac we have standard organization of nigeria and couple of them who ought to be standing for the fair and equity in transactions we have uh, the commission for protection of consumers what is this agency is doing so nigerians are at the receiving end Governments lift the price of petroleum, it floated the, uh, the currency, and all that pouring down to Nigerians. No interventions from these key agencies, at least to moderate prices of these items. So this posture of the government, I don't care. They are only concerned about their own revenue and not the welfare of Nigerians should rather drop. Right. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Steve, I'd like to get you know your, your take on what I've been mean, basically you just described a free market uh, where pretty much uh, the variables, the forces, the economic uh, forces as as we've come to know, the market forces uh, determine uh, what goes, uh, even though the government still has the power of regulation uh, and supervision. But also uh, in, in, in trying to assess that, whether this is what we are witnessing, a gradual transition where government is hand is taking its hands off. Uh, the levers and and the the, the 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 thermostat, so to say, to regulate the temperature of the economy. Uh, give me a sense of what you make of the explanations of the Minister of Budget and National Planning. The CBN uh, Governor was also around. The Minister of Finance and the Economy, uh, Wale Odun, was also there. The Federal Inland Revenue Service boss was also at the House of Representatives just some two days ago, giving an explanation as to what is going on and what action plans they do have in place to address it. Plus, uh, last year, July, uh, the president made a pronouncement around an emergency on food security. Have you seen anything that suggests that something is happening or has happened so far to address this concern about food security for Nigerians? <laughs> Thank you so much. It's quite funny that we are talking about a declaration or presidential executive order uh, that happened like uh, about four, five, six months ago. And Nigerians are groaning in pains and lack and shortage of these very commodities. How would you declare uh, a food security or food uh, 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 security? And you, you are not looking at even producing these very items. You are not looking at any interventionist programs to at least encourage artisanal farmers. We talked about improved seed. A bag of fertilizer is selling above 40,000 or thereabouts. You can't even find it available. The farmers are running away from their ancestral homes, and you are talking about food security. So uh, we often hear the rhetorics from the government. Like you said, two, three days ago, a couple of them from the physical and monetary, we are in the House of Representatives to, you know, state their own views about the rising cost. You never had any solution from them. All you keep hearing is this very rhetoric around what we are doing, what we are doing, what we are doing, and what we can do, and nothing. And Nigerians are groaning, and Nigerians are suffering. So federal government declared food security about six months ago. Until now, we have not seen an increase or a, a better storage in our silos. By now, we should be hearing that federal government through Minister of Agriculture is building additional six or uh, seven silos in the six ge geopolitical zones. We should be having additional one one silos, maybe uh, five um, uh, metric tons or there about size of five silos at least to store these very food items. 
We are not hearing that. We are just a question of rhetoric and propaganda of government. Remember, in the twilight of the Buhari administration, he hosted what you call the price premium mix in Abuja, while the back of rice is selling above 40,000. So, and you cannot find the parties. You go and listen to the farmers, you listen to those who own meals, rice meals. You find that there is no paddies. So, uh, like I said, sim it seems like government strives in propaganda. The rice pyramids you saw was even like a collection of these very rices from all the farmers from the Federation and hosted it there put that pyramids that looks as seems as if that is Nigerians are self-sufficient in production of rice or these very uh, uh, grains. Rice, a bag of rice is still very selling above, as we speak, above 50, 60,000, at least the local ones. So government has to be sincere. You cannot make a declaration and without attaching some level of actionable uh, uh, or, or actionable commitment to make sure that these very items are seen, not only seen, are affordable for Nigerians. So we need some level of commitment of government, not just the aspect of the rhetoric. Yes, it sounds fantastic to say, yes, I understand. Yes, I'm declaring food security or food, uh, whatever. And you cannot find these very food items available in the tables of Nigeria. So government needs to improve. Go away from these rhetoric and be more committed to delivering most of these very uh, promises that you have made. It is possible. It can be done. All you need is a level of commitment. Find the real farmers. Just like we had, we saw the past administration of CBN in Dodge in what they call uh, Anchor Boas program to make sure the upper production of these grains. Government has to be practical and sincere about it. It can work. It's a very fantastic program. It's just that they fell as in their usual manner to you know allocate these funds to the real farmers. I keep saying, you must not all depend and focus on the artisanal farmers. You can also look at these industrial farmers. Like I said earlier, the ulams are there, the flower mills are here, the nestle, all of them. There are big time farmers that you can collaborate with and make sure that you cultivate these very grains in a very reasonable quantity that will be made at least the prices of these items in the market to come down. So government has to be sincere about it and be focused in doing it. Yes, it's good to have intention to grow uh, our food by making a declaration of food security. It's also good and it should be seen that government is doing the right things to make sure that they live to the things they said. If you declare a food security Make sure that the farmers returns back to their central homes. That is the way to know that you actually mean what you said. It's not just the declaration. Make sure that you engage the right people so that these very food items are cultivated. Make sure that you provide the right palliative, the input palliative that is required to make sure these grains are, are there. By now, we should be having an improved seeds that will be given to farmers, if not freely, but in a subsidized manner. These are the approaches that needs to be taken, not just the rhetoric or the propaganda around the declaration and the newspapers will have it as they are signed by the news media. We carry it and no action is taken. Government has to be decisive and be determined to solve this very issue. We cannot continue to live in rhetoric. Right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, just before we go, Dr. Steve, based on your assessment of the current trajectory with regards to the Nigerian economy, what can Nigerians expect in the weeks and months to come? Uh, there are two ways to look at it. From a government who is sincere, a government who feels the impulse that feels that is sympathetic to the sufferings of nigerians uh, you can say you can raise hope or stay hope 
Uh, you can also look it from a government who is doesn't care, who uh, feels that it's not their business to be in business of taking uh, care of the welfare of the citizen. So if you look at it from a government who have listened to the pulse of Nigerians, the reactions that are coming as a form of protest, you will believe that the government will do one or two things. But it's expected that whatever government is doing should be concrete. It shouldn't continue in this uh, post uh window dressing, or sugarcoating approaches. Government has to be decisive. It, what does it take the government to reverse most of this economic, unpopular, unplanned, ill-advised policies of government, like the fuel subsidy? Yes, you may not get things totally back. At least you can so have some psychological and some relief for Nigerians. Issues around flotation. The monies like you, you are raising from uh, revaluation of your currency or devaluation of your currency is still being ployed back. Inflation is eating them up. And the worst it is that Nigerians will soon face, Nigerians will soon migrate to the point where the price elasticity of a product, entrepreneurs, businessmen produces, they cannot find people to buy it. I listened to the report you earlier, uh, you earlier played. We are most of these very retailers are complaining that they are having low uh, patronage. It will get to a point when the price elasticity of product produced by Nigerians, produced by entrepreneurs, the prices have gone way beyond the purchasing power of an average Nigerian that they cannot patronize them and those businesses will collapse. It will ripple, it, the ripple effect will be huge on the economy and it will be huge on Nigeria. So government needs to change its posture for the sake and for the realities that we are facing. Government needs to move away from this very old pattern of issuing out statements you know, giving commands and move into the field. Like I said, there should be a quick uh, intervention in form of constituting a federal or presidential tax force on price control. The committee will not be that forceful, but the, the dialogue with captains of industry. Why would you move your price in this very geometric form? Why don't you please feel the pulse of Nigeria? Government can do it. Listen to these captains of industries and find what and what government also needed to do for them to have a relatively fair price. The institutions of institutions of government of the institutions of government like the NAVDAG, the Standard Organization, the Pro uh, Consumer Protection Unit needs to be rekindled so that they will move out there and start looking at things in the reform of it. So these are the interventions and these are what is expected of government who is sincere but if it's still the old government we are talking the posture of remaining and sit down the look things will get worse nigerians who cannot afford to buy some items like i said earlier we are in zero one zero uh, meal pattern it may get to a zero 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 point and once it gets to that the consequences will un be unbearable for nigerians and even for the government itself Right, uh, Doctor, it's quite a grim analysis, but it is fair and realistic because a lot of Nigerians can relate uh, to all that has been said uh, as far as this conversation is concerned. I wish we have some sort of crystal ball that we can look into and that will tell us how soon or how long, how much longer we have to endure uh, before we see the light that is at the end of this proverbial uh, tunnel. It's a long tunnel for most Nigerians because this situation has been unending for quite some time. But we're going to have to leave it here for now. Dr. Steve Wachiko, as always, we really appreciate uh, your invaluable contributions to this discussion. Thank you most kindly for joining us on Daybreak this morning. Well, thanks for having me, Mr. Steve Wachiko. Mr. Steve Wachiko, thank you very much for joining us on the program.